Virginia plays Virginia Tech. If they win, they're the division champion at six and two. Nobody can catch them. They control their fate. Pitt is a two loss team as well. They've got Virginia Tech this week. Uh, then they've got another game against Boston College, I believe. So if they win out, but Virginia still wins because they win the tiebreaker, having won over Pitt in week one, Virginia Tech has a very good shot of winning the division if they win both games or even if they lose to Pitt and win the finale against Virginia, they create a five and three log jam and they've got most of the um, tiebreakers in a multi-team um, setup from what I've seen. And even though Miami's four and three and they could create some kind of log jam at five and three, the tiebreakers do not favor them. They would need a two-way tiebreaker with Pitt and that's not possible. That was the one team that they beat in the um, the situation there. And also Virginia, of course, but they're one game behind the Cavaliers. So that's a little disappointing because when you just glance at the standings, you think, oh, there, there, there's probably a path there somewhere, but there's just not. Yeah, everything that Mark just said is true. Uh, the path to the Ch Coastal Division Championship, wherein you go to the ACC Championship game, has ended for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, it, like you said, it could be a five, four-way tie at five and three, uh, but there's no possible combination to give Miami the tiebreakers above all three of those teams. So while there are technically four teams in contention for co-ACC Coastal Division champions, uh, there is no path for Miami to be the one of them that's ranked at the top of that group. So, yeah, that is uh, that is unfortunate. That is, uh, you know, disappointing, but it comes back to Miami not holding up their end of the bargain. You lose to a terrible, terrible, terrible Georgia Tech team who had not won for the next month, by the way, after they won in Miami until last night against NC State, who's another abjectly terrible team. Um, yeah, but you lose to them. You know, you, you find a way to lose to Virginia Tech, who was reeling and on the verge of probably potentially firing Justin Fuente. You turn the ball over four times in the first 13 snaps or whatever it was. Um, you know, it just Miami didn't do what Miami needed to do. And that's been, unfortunately, a recurring problem over the course of time uh, with this program. And yeah, you know, like I said, it is very disappointing. And I'm not changing my standards. I'm not lowering my standards uh, from where we should be. Miami should be perennial ACC Coastal Division champions. And then you go from there, uh, elevate the program, obviously go up against a, whether it's a Clemson, Florida State, uh, but currently obviously Clemson uh, in the Atlantic uh, in the ACC championship game, and then elevate past that to try to win, um, get into the college football playoff and win a national championship. That's the goal, period. Uh, because that's what, you know, the standard needs to be for Miami. Will this see, can you see a path to this season being, I won't say a success, but acceptable. Yeah, when you're, you know, three and four, and then, you know, you run off wins to, uh, you know, get to 500, get over 500, get bowl eligible. You know, if you close out the regular season with two wins, you know, you win a bowl game, so you're on a six-game winning streak. That's preferable as opposed to the, you know, the opposite, uh, you know, scenario. But, no, the season's not a success. And, you know, people were saying, oh, well, it, the season could be a success when you lose to Florida. No, I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. I will say my viewpoint is that this season was invalidated from being a success as soon as you lost to Georgia Tech, period. That was it. That was literally the end. Um, and anything else that happens, you know, again, I'm going to celebrate the successes along the way, but I'm not going to, you cannot ignore what has happened in the past either. And losing to Georgia Tech for me invalidates this entire season. It is, that's unacceptable. That loss is unacceptable. And that is what has put Miami in the situation that we're in right now. From a perception standpoint, they could emerge from all of this as being determined as the best team by the masses in a certain sense out of that division, meaning they went out the last two games. They're heavily favored. They're eight and four. They go win a bowl game, especially if they get elevated. And we can touch upon this as well, because there are bowl projections all over the place as there are this time of year, um, because the Coastal Division champion is most likely going to get waxed by Clemson by four or five touchdowns in the championship game. That doesn't look good. It's not a good look. It finished with seven losses last year after the bowl loss. And Miami could reasonably be nine and four at the end of all this with a pretty respectable bowl win over a top 25 level opponent. I mean, that's possible. And 
you know, obviously we hope that, you know, we get a, a favorable bowl placement and win that bowl game. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a, it, it's an interesting kind of a path. And like, like Mark said, you know, Miami, and I've, I've said it too, Miami has the most talent in, in, on the roster in the coastal division. That's just the way that it is. And you can just look that up. I mean, there's no reason that you should be playing down to these teams. And I think that this team did turn a corner. Manny Diaz was saying that some of the, uh, uh, you know, you had to go through some of the hard times to get to uh, the development that we've seen. I don't necessarily agree with that because if you come out and play to the standard of excellence that you have, then you don't need to lose games to bad teams to all of a sudden unlock the next level. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you know, we could see, I mean, and the outside perception could be, oh yeah, Miami is the best team of Virginia, Virginia Tech, Pittsburgh, and Miami of that quad, you know, that, that quartet of teams. But then the conversation is going to go, okay, well, if this is the best team, why am I watching insert other random team here playing in the ACC championship game. What, and so then that leads us back to Miami, not taking care of their own business. You know what I mean? So that is even in itself being thought of as the best team out of that quartet is a backhanded compliment because then we have to talk about the failings of why, if they're the best team, we're not watching them in the ACC championship game. So there's still much to be desired. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully moving forward, uh, Miami, you know, beats FIU. They're a 19 point favor, so three touchdowns. Um, Miami, you know, hopefully covers that. I don't know that we've covered a big spread uh, all year. Actually, we probably have not. Now, excuse me, now that I think about it. Um, but you know, at least a you know a 17 point, you know, two three touchdown win against FIU. You travel to Duke next week, which is a, a reeling team in and of itself. But obviously, like we've seen with rebuilding teams and teams that are bad, Georgia Tech being the standard bad team because they're the worst team that we've played and they beat us. Um, you cannot take Duke for granted. So, I mean, there are, you know, there are hurdles along the way before you can just pencil in eight and four. Because, again, Miami is not scaring anybody with the colors of the jersey and the name on the front anymore. You know, I know that people want to still think that. And yes, you aspire to the greatness of 2001. This is not that team. And we've proven over the course of this year that this is not this team. So you got to go out and earn it. And then hopefully, you know, these things like the bowl placements and things, the, they will uh, bear themselves out to be true when you go and handle the business of winning the games on the schedule. I would have to do a quick scan across the country. But I'm willing to say that Miami would be the only team in the country that has lost two games in which they were at least a 14-point favorite. 14-point uh, favorite uh, against Virginia Tech, 21-point favorite against Georgia Tech. That would yeah, be my but, guess. I could scan the country pretty quickly, and I think I could find another team. Maybe if they're there, I would be able to find them uh, because I keep up with that stuff, and I know who beat who, but I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I may There's a few games, but Elliot said there's three games where Miami didn't come within two scores. Uh, and he, he classifies the score as eight points um, because that's the maximum possible um, of the spread. If you look at it on like actual scoring, you know, if you take into account these other things like field goals and whatnot, there's been two games where Miami was not within three scores of the line projected. So yeah, it was a, it, it was massive, mass underachievement this season to begin with. And that, again, you know, is part of the story. I'm guessing it would have been those two games plus possibly the West Michigan game that they only won by five. They were yep. probably a 20-some point favorite. In Correct. That game. Yep. I made the comment about uh, Miami having that perception at the end of the year and that possible that possible perception at the end of the year, if they close out nine and four with a bowl win, people watch bowl games. They attribute different uh, status or different uh, importance to the bowl games, jumping into the rankings at nine and four. Uh, because I think back to Virginia doing that last year, not winning the division, winning impressively against an SEC team in the bowl game. And they just had some kind of perception or aura after the season. People were like, man, look at Virginia. Look at what they got going on. They're the best team in the division. They didn't win the division. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like you said, uh, the bowl games do uh, impact people because you know, for some people, still that is the first time, first and only time that you might see a team. Uh, just because you're going to follow your own teams, because college football is still very regional and things like that. Yeah, you get your you know uh, 
Tuesday, Wednesday night in action, your Thursday night ESPN standard, your now Friday night ESPN games, things like that, where, okay, if, if you're not watching your team, out at the bar, at the game, wherever, even sitting on your own couch with your one or two or five televisions. Oh, I'll watch, you know, the Miami one Friday night game against uh, Virginia. You know, I'll watch the one uh, Cal Old Miss game, you know, because it's in my region all of a sudden. But yeah, you know, bowl games are television shows at the heart of them. And that's going to be part of our conversation moving forward. So remember that bowls are television games. They're not games. Nobody cares about that. They're television shows. And People will watch them because, you know, it's been over time. And then that will be the one thing. Okay, yeah, I saw Miami August 24th against Florida. Maybe caught them in the middle of October against Virginia. And I see them now. And then that's the perception of them that's going to carry you through until next August. I'll tell people over and over because this will start to be a topic uh, over the next several weeks. Yeah, they have funny names, many of them. They're funny and easy to make fun of. You look at the stadiums and many of them are 75% empty. That's because you're talking about a location that's difficult for the two fan bases to get to, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. A lot of teams don't have really good records, but when you look at television ratings, uh, there is a glut of games around January 1st that overlap each other. That's done for television purposes as well. But except for those games, they are isolated. They are exclusive. So if you want to watch a college football game on that Tuesday night on December 23rd or December 28th, you have to watch that game. And the TV ratings are enormous for all of them. Believe me, I see the TV ratings. I get an email every day at work. Boom. These are the TV ratings in sports. I know exactly what they are. And they're huge. Uh, yeah. Exclusive. Right. And again, at the heart of things, especially for, you know, yeah, the, the major bowl games, your New Year's Six and your college football playoff, those like have extra importance and, and whatnot. But like these rank and file, you know, walk-ons independence bowl or whatever, you know, like those kind of things, all of them at the heart, just like Mark is talking about. And I said, are television shows more than they are games. And remember that. Folks, if you're good at fantasy football. If you're good at projecting stats and you want to win prizes, go to MiamiMoneyBall.com. It's a site that's set up specifically for uh, Florida football fans, the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Hurricanes, etc. You go on there. You've got categories of statistics in which you can project how Miami is going to do statistically against FIU, and then you win prizes. It's a good setup. MiamiMoneyBall.com.